I already explained to you in my film Fairistocracy that the Templars were no real monks but aristocratic nobility, second and third sons who traditionally went into a monastery or a so-called priory, as in the Priory of Sion, because only the first son got the castle, the land, power, the cattle and the concubines. The word priory comes from the French word la priorie, etymologically near to the English word pray, whereas la priorie is a place to pray as in a monastery. Now watch the number 8 form, as in octogon. It's in it. It's here. And there's a lot more to see. Octogon. And Sion is a very ancient town in Octogon, Switzerland. See my film Octogon, the Empire of Darkness. The horrendous Templar organization La Priore de Sion is without any doubt in Sion, Octogon, Switzerland. Coming to the reason why the Templars chose Swiss Sardisis or Sisters of Isis, Switzerland for their base on August 1st, 1291. See my film The Pharaoh Show. And in Sion, they speak French, just as the original Templars did. So here we can see the, um, the whole. Ma this is the uh, this is the canton of uh, of Valle, where the um, all this area this is called Valle. This is where most of the mercenaries they came from here, and. Um, I talk some more about it, but about here is a place called Naters, where there's the museum of the the Swiss Pope's of the Pope's Swiss Guard. It's just in the same area, and they were mercenaries. All well, they still are mercenaries. You think that's a coincidence? And if you go up a little bit, so go up a little bit. So Bern, here's Bern. You know, like the bear. This is the, the town of the bear. Like in the Revelations. Nice country, eh? Yeah, so here's Zion. Here's Zion. Also the elders of Zion. That's where they are from. The Priory of Zion is probably situated in the Basilica Valère in Zion. To the right here. So this is sign of the uh, La Priore de, de Sion. Well, there it is again. La Priore de Sion, the Priory of Sion, the Elders of Sion, in Switzerland, Octogon. What a marvellous place to hide, eh? Well, I'll tell you, these people have a lot to hide and they will never tell the truth. So we have to find it ourselves and dig through the Swiss mountains. Don't we now? And these elders described in the book the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, or in French here, Le Protocol des Sages de Sion, and in German, the Protocolle der Weise von Sion, are the very same Templar Masons of Octogon, Switzerland, from the Priory of Sion, who own the US through the horrendous Nazi biz of Basel, and who finance Hitler in 1923 you know the um, the elders of uh, it's like an elder in a priory they got elders as well do you see what I'm getting at like I, I just showed you the the monastery where the where these Templars were at the beginning and the town Sion it's in Switzerland look here it's written in French and they write Sion in English it's not written the right way it's not with a Z it's with an S the original Sion, because they spoke French in the beginning. And um, well, the why it says in French, the wise man, you know, like in a monastery, a wise monk, the elders, the elder monks in the priory. It's all from Switzerland. Just look at the number 8 octagon sign in their logo, which also looks a bit like a pretzel, which also originates from octagon.
where you can buy the octagon bread in any bakery shop in octagon switzerland the elders of Sion and the Priory of Sion is all related to Switzerland. It's one of the one and the same thing. It's related to Switzerland and the fair aristocracy. The logo has the octagon eight in it, and le fleur de lys, symbol of the Père A pharaonic aristocracy, as the Templars were. Where fleur is the French word for flower, because it represents the lotus flower of the river Nile. And in Switzerland, there even is a town called Lys, as in Fleur de Lys. Wow, and look what that coat of arms look like. Well, what do you know? Well, this is where they're from. The fair aristocracy, the lotus flower on the River Nile. It's all related to Switzerland, I told you. You look, you can have a look at it. Wikipedia, Lys. There it is. Look it up yourself. There. That's where the Fleur de Lys is from. This is where the snake is. This is where evil is. This is the base of the pharaohs. Look, they still got the Priory of Switzerland today. It's called OSMTH. And um, what do I... Uh, they have a website. What do I see here? Could that be a falcon? These things are still going on today. It says that the Priory of Sion was founded after the First Crusade in 1099, but I tell you it's slightly older even, and the reason of the entire Crusades, including the first one. In 1099 they probably had their first celebration going on after the success of the First Crusade. And here this Latin these Latin words here, it's it's the glory, it's it's it says Seigneur, the Lord. And it's the Lord of Darkness, Baphomet. It's an omen to the Lord of Darkness, Baphomet or Seth, Seton, Satan. So they're still there today, you know. In the internet. La Priori de Suisse. The Priory of Switzerland. Uh, the Priory of Switzerland in Sion. This is the Priory of, of Sion. So when Pierre Plantin in 1956 France started to leak out about the Priory of Sion, he was immediately silenced up and forced to admit he was just talking fairy tales, but he wasn't. This was in the French province of Haute-Savoie, just next to the Swiss border and not far away from the Priory in the town of Sion. And soon after the Crusades, when Switzerland was founded in 1291 on August the 1st, and they had their gold and treasures safely stashed in the Swiss caves, all of a sudden Swiss mercenaries could be seen on all battlegrounds of hundreds of years of European wars and massacres to come. Of course, under Templar's command. And today, the Octagon Swiss assassins, they show it like this in the internet. Charming people, aren't they? And this also in the Swiss Valle province next to Sion, where the, um, the Museum of the Swiss Guard is. Lovely building, isn't it? So here next to Sion, in Octagon is the uh, museum of the Pope's Swiss Guard. It's all in the same area. And here is one of those Swiss mercenary butchers who terrorized and massacred everywhere in Europe, standing in front of a Swiss cave of the Templars, yeah, in the Priory of Sion. And at the beginning, most of these Swiss mercs came from a province called Valais, where Sion is. This is the very same province of which Sion is the capital. And right next to Sion is the town of Natas, where the Museum of the Pope's Swiss Guard is. And they started 500 years ago as the Pope's mercenaries, which are still are on this very day. Well, you know what the Pope does and, and his priests, they, they rape children. And these guys defend it. 
as in Switzerland they had slave children until 1989. There are no human rights in this country, nothing. Still the Middle Ages and they love it, oh, they're so proud of it, look at it. They're still walking around in their same Middle Age uniforms. This is how much they love the Middle Age mentality. Looks a bit like a killer hornet as well. There's no other place in Europe where the inhabitants have a greater knowledge and experience of murdering and massacring other people as the Swiss have, both in Europe and in Arabia during the Crusades. So when World War II started, all the know-how of killing people and their children was at hand in Octagon where, in the true Swiss hiding manners of the Nazi Templar secret disciplines, they had death to come until the very last moment when being naked in a freezing cold bathroom with all the doors locked and inevitable death coming from above. So nobody resisted nor defended their loved ones being appeased by false, false promises of life and future after only one more shower. I recognize the clean hand of cold Swiss methodical octagon warfare in it, comparable to the Swiss neutrality swindle. Yes, camouflage and lies are excellent weapons indeed. That is, if you like them. These weapons of deception against even defenseless children are the weapons of a very cold and calculated personality. The very thing you find in abundance all over Octagon Switzerland. It's them all right. They're doing the same thing with me. And they say, oh, we never did anything. They've been doing it for 16 years to me and my family. They said, no, no, we don't torture people. Well, they tortured me for five months. And now they're saying the same thing. It never happened. I know this story, it never happened. Well, it did happen. They tortured me, these Swiss. They wrecked my health and they continued tor terrorizing me and my children for 16 years now. And then they all say, no, it never happened. We don't do these things. They always say it never happened. They always say it never happened. And I know they do. I know it from my own experience, they do. You understand? So here's in Baden in Switzerland with the castle behind the obelisk. And this is the main police station here. And what we see here, the sun hieroglyph all over. There and there and there. Here's some more sun hieroglyph. Still the main police station here. And this is their obelisk. The symbol of the pharaonic domination. Well, they are dominating, all right. Well, this is the police station, eh? In Baden, in Switzerland. So the B in the, uh, the coat of arms here, next to the police station. Because the B symbolizes Isis. And we have to work for the queen. The whole of Babylon if you want. So and this is still the police station here. And here in Baden they have the octagon symbol at the front door. So this also means if there's a war don't, I mean we're part of the gang, don't destroy the house, don't kill us like octagon, in octagon. So I have no doubt whatsoever in this mansion here, the Freemasons, they have their gatherings here. With the blessing of Isis, their goddess. It's the coat of arms of the Boveri house. Here's the Vesica Pices. And um, here's Isis. I think they did love gun deals with uh, Nazi Germany, Boveri. That's Isis, yeah. Yeah, the Swiss Isis. I'm not sure if I'm allowed in here, but who cares? 
Sort of a stroll in the park, eh? Nice little house here. So, nobility, I suppose. And there are four statues. For each statue, it says winter, summer, spring, and autumn, fall. I think these guys here, they uh, collaborated with the Nazis and Hitler. I think uh, the Ehrlichan factories, uh, they have something to do with that. I'll look it up later. <sighs> nice little mansion here. The joining. I wonder nobody has come yet. So here it says Boveri, that is the Latin name or Italian for uh, a, a bull. It's still the B and the O in it, like B U for a bull. And um, so here is the bull. And the bull is uh, Apis in the Pharaonic language. And the, uh, the hieroglyph for Apis, the bull, is the, uh, the logo of the Citroën French cars. So these are real big. Huge pharaohs here, yeah. still pharaonic stuff in here. And this looks quite reptilian stuff here. The bull, puppies. Have a shower. The villa in Baden I just showed you before belongs to the Walter Boveri family, who first worked for Erlikon in Switzerland in Zurich, well known for selling guns and ammo to the Nazis in World War II and prolonging the war with two years. Rudolf Hess, who also studied at the ETH, the Technical University of Zurich, came to this villa many times, together with General Ulrich Wille. Therefore, it's not really a coincidence that this Swiss Brown Boveri company used slave workers from the Nazi concentration camps such as Buchenwald and Auschwitz as happened to this Italian woman called Clem Clement. Yeah, you can read it. If you, if you, if you punch in Clement and um, well, all the other things here, and it pops out. Here it says again, Braun Boveri. Uh, well, the story goes on and on and on and on. The Swiss got their dirty little fingers and everything. And nobody does a thing against it. Except the CIA, maybe. Oh, well, no, just a handful of people. Uh, just... Just a few. This is the base of evil, folks. Octagon of the Templars. And the Nazis, they were the Templars. Well, you can find it yourself in the internet. Furthermore, proven by the fact that later on they merged with another company with a logo like this here. So these Swiss from Octogon with their multinational companies have their fingers in all crime against humanity prepared by the Swiss Nazi Templars. And it all goes together with big business. Armies together with big business. Geostrategical wars. So now th this is the name of the company now. SCR uh, BBC Brown Bavaria. Company. Charming, isn't it? Charming country, eh? Oh, Charles, let's do some skiing in this charming country. So the Europeans killing each other. And this uh, this is the, Scharn, the German battleship Scharnhorst from the Second World War. Yeah, so the Europeans killing each other. 
and the Swiss making guns and weapons so they can kill each other and making money. You see the propulsion? Three brown Bovary company geared steam turbine turbines. Yeah. They sank it when in nineteen forty three, I think. Yeah. Well this is Switzerland with the neutrality swindle. The engines by Swiss company, multinational, well they're that are all over. In America, in, in Sweden, in Germany and but it is Swiss. This is Templar stuff. So this is a tank defense here from the Second World War. It's going it's it's all all around Switzerland. The French speaking Swiss they call it Toblerone, like the chocolate. Uh, here they call it the uh, the field of the obelisks. Well, it's not an obelisk, of course. And here with the metal, the uh, the barbed wire was of course being attached. Well, this is all over. As the Swiss, they financed Adolf Hitler. You know, they they knew there was something coming up to them. You know. So they were expecting something, a possibility. So this is all over here. It's about 30 k's from the German border. So and there's Baden. So it's a tank defense and you know, with barbed wire and in German they call it Panzersperre. So in Switzerland, of course, the ones who fin financed Adolf Hitler. Well, they look good after themselves, eh? So this Swiss tank defense is going all around Switzerland. Not exactly at the border, but you know, 30, like 20 miles. So and here's the Swiss bunker just like uh, uh, 40 yards from the uh, the tank defense, Second World War stuff. Ready to use again. So this here, all around Switzerland, these are the defense lines. I mean, they planned the whole thing. This is a map of Switzerland, like this. Here's Germany, here's Italy, here's France. So they planned this whole thing from the beginning and they were prepared for ev everything. So I filmed this here in Baden, next, right next to the uh, Boveri uh, um, villa of Walter Boveri, Boveri who um, collaborated with the Nazis and also helped prolonging the Second World War and um, took concentration camp prisoners um, as slave labor for their Bovary um, industry producing um, turbines and engines for the Nazis nice country isn't it they were prepared for everything and these defense lines were more like for you know stopping defenseless people you know refugees and all that it was not really for something else yeah and of course if, uh, uh, if something went wrong they had a, a plan b so this is the plan b but they uh, they calculated all that nothing could go wrong the whole second world war was planned by the Nazi Templars of Switzerland. They've got their dirty little fingers in, in every crime against humanity, against Europe, with their banks, with the multinational companies. This is their base, Octagon. During World War II, Octagon, Switzerland had quite a few concentration camps. Were also over 1,500, 1,500 US airmen were badly treated and even murdered. 
They were beaten, starved, intimidated with dogs, shouts, threats, isolated into months of solitary confinement with no light, no blankets and on a starvation diet, bad hygienic conditions with lice, fleas and no medical treatment. They were shot at and killed, suffering dental deterioration because of the lack of food and this in the land of the Red Cross and the Geneva Conventions. What a scam! To which they prefer only the others will keep and obey. Convenient, isn't it? When all the others turn the other cheek, what a strategy. Uh, Switzerland's three main concentration camps were Vauvillermoos, next to Luzern, Hunenburg and Le Diablerie, where the word Diable it means the devil. Nice, isn't it? Charming. Here I will quote some of the witness accounts of some of the American victims of Swiss organized crimes against humanity in the land of the Red Cross and Geneva Convention scams. So here's the website and here you can just click on it like uh, like here war crimes testimonies here you can read what kind of people the Swiss really are you know when there's nothing to gain like you know so they're not smiling then they show their real octagon templates face and who they really are so well if Germany would have won the war, all these thousands of Americans and other people here in Switzerland, well, they would have died. They would have gone to, no, not even to Auschwitz. You know, they have their own concentration camps here. They would have murdered them if the Germans would have won the war. That's for sure. So if you click on these here, you can uh, read some of the uh, witness accounts of these tortured young Americans. Thousands of Americans, defenseless Americans, they were tortured in Swiss concentration camps. What a charming people, aren't they? Oh, thank God Hitler didn't win the war, eh? So I will read some excerpts of it here. Sergeant Alpert. While I was at Le Diablerie, that's a concentration camp, the guards were very sullen and if you didn't do any, everything they told you to or if they wanted to do something, I saw them jab fellows in the back with the butt of their rifle. Quite frequently someone would escape from the prison and then at frequent intervals during the night of the escape the guards would come in and wake us up by prodding us with their bayonets. Next, um, Staff Sergeant Raymond Bowes from Milwaukee. Here's his testimony. I was sent without trial to Vauvilla Moos concentration camp of Switzerland for all nationalities. While prisoner in this concentration camp, Swiss did not specify length of sentence or even make an effort to bring us to trial. Throughout our entire stay in this prison, living conditions sanitary facilities etc were terrible and food was so bad and so insufficient in quantity that we appealed to the Red Cross in Geneva for food parcels. We were informed by the Red Cross through the American legation that we were not considered sufficiently in need to warrant food parcels from the Red Cross although they made no effort whatsoever through inspections or inquiries to ascertain the conditions in this prison. The international headquarters of the Red Cross being within 100 miles of the prison and the same country. All those spending the average time in this prison suffered loss of weight, malnutrition and dental deterioration from which I'm still suffering due to improper diet and extremely low quantity of food after serving 45 days under the strictest possible discipline constantly enforced by Swiss guards and vicious dogs under conditions they could only be compared with German and Japanese concentration camps. We finally 
repatriated on February 17, 1945 and we understood that this was made possible by an agreement between the American State Department and Swiss government whereby two Germans were released for each American released by Switzerland. So here we can see, you know, Swiss is dealing for Germany, two against one, two Jerry's for one American. Now you can see what side they were on, eh? Me, Sean Ross, I recognize the same criminal Swiss mindset and Swiss behavior. They haven't changed a bit and still do it today. For political reasons, I've experienced 16 years of Swiss Nazi terror on me and my family, severe torture, beaten up by Swiss policemen and civilians, threats, and in 2002 they sent me to a forced labor camp, camp called Witzwil, which I used to call Auschwitzwil. You know, the Witzwil, the Witz, like in Auschwitz. Where they refused me medical care because I didn't have a medical insurance, they said. So I escaped the camp and slept a week outside while walking day and night to France. Before that they put me in a Swiss torture detention centre called Amthaus Bern, Bern, where they murdered many immigrants and political prisoners, as they did with Wolfgang Umfogel from Austria in 2010, who wanted to sell banking CDs to the US concerning tax evasion of the richest Americans who don't pay their taxes anymore and this is the actual reason of the actual shutdown in 2013 where today's Swiss Nazi banks rob the American people blind. So in this torture prison people were scratching until their skin were bleeding because of the bad hygienic conditions and some sort of bugs in the blankets. Just as what the US Airmen during the war had to experience. But even worse, in this prison, in 2002, people are tort were tortured and murdered through code O2T air deprivation torture methods. And I have names and dates of people who were murdered there, which I've put into another film. So here you can see the Octagon Army of Switzerland pushing an American airplane. Oh, there's the... American star there. This is what the Vauvilla Moos concentration camps looks like today. And it's still a prison. They never change. They're probably doing some other experiments on people there. So here's an article of 1998 from the Independent where it says that the Swiss they had uh, slave camps like concentration camps of about 6,000 Jews and uh, probably more other people and um, well, I mean the dead ones won't talk anymore you know uh, it was probably a present from the Germans who gave them a lot of Jews to uh, to work for the German indus war industry in Switzerland so inside Switzerland they had slave labor ca camps like in Germany charming people aren't they so here you can read the whole story if you want, just click on pause, uh, read it. But this is Switzerland folks and they hired it. And of course the whole world's financial elite, they got their money stashed so nobody will ever do anything against this country here. Yeah? And then the subhumans were Jews, gypsies and American pilots. Today the subhumans in Switzerland are the immigrants like me. And just as the Red Cross, Amnesty and Human Rights don't even look at the evidence, nor do they answer, I've sent thousands of letters and even went there personally. The Swiss know very well what they're doing and nothing has changed. It's all premeditated crime of an entire people and I've experienced the same things as those young US pilots but 50 years later and even worse. And over a non-stop period of 16 years of Swiss terror by these Nazis. So here you can see a picture of the Val Villamos uh, Swiss concentration camp with two Swiss um, 
Swiss Guards. It's on a Russian website here. I found it here. And here too, a drawing of the Valvilla Most concentration camp in Switzerland on a Russian website. I can't read the words, so I can't even contact them. Like, so here the name of the other concentration camp, Hunenburg. So Hune in Swiss German that means some sort of a giant, a mythical giant who crushes humans. Nice, charming, isn't it? Here's yeah, some sort of a medal with the Russian star on it and says USA Air Force Mal Camp Maloney. From this same thing. Here's yeah, some sort of an uh, isolation box at the uh, concentration camp Hunenburg in Switzerland. It looks like it was taken, the picture just right after the war. And next, the witness account of Sergeant Giametti. The fellows at Valvilamos used to write us and ask for food and clothing. They hardly ever got anything to eat. They looked like skeletons when they got out of there. The next testimony is of First Lieutenant Long from Wisconsin. The Swiss SS Guard were handpicked for their duties at this prison camp. The American legation was paying for medical care for the internees. I was told of one of, of one case, however, by another American officer who had spent quite some time at Valvilla Mos, that an American who had attempted to escape was shot and had neglected for two days afterwards before medical attention was finally given to him. Well, I experienced the same thing. They made me sick through torture and oxygen deprivation and they refused to help me see a doctor and I was locked in in there. So I escaped. The next is 1st Lieutenant Wallace Northfeld from Minneapolis, Minnesota. But when the foreign minister was down to visit us, then we got good meals. I lost 40 pounds. At different times we tried to escape and they'd jump over the fence and the guards would let go with machine guns and rifles. The Russians were having a little trouble between themselves and were talking loud and making a lot of noise. They were arguing communist Russia and some other kind of Russia and the guards came in and told them to shut up and the Russians told them to shut up and the guards sized the dog on them. And one of the Russians took a board and hit the dog over the head and killed it. And then the guards immediately turned their guns on them and shot them. Most of the guards were very pro-Nazi, it seemed to me. So here's some more of the captured military. Badly treated in Switzerland. It seemed to me that the Swiss captain just carried out orders from higher ups and as soon as the American dignitaries or high ranking officers came through, such as General Leahy, everything was always just fine. We had good meals then and he promised to do this for the man and that for the man. But just as soon as they left, he'd crack the whip again. At la diablerie, diable means devil, the captain was a big heavy set man, about 6 feet tall and he weighed about 240 pounds. Two of our boys were picked up trying to escape from there and he had 25 guards guarding these two men with dogs and shot machine guns and they marched them through the town of Le Diablerie and made them the laughing stock. At Davos we were more or less placed in a German rest camp and the Germans seemed to come and go as they pleased. My opinion of the German Swiss was very pro-Nazi. And through information obtained while I was over there and through talking to different people there it was my understanding that the Swiss had 600,000 people working in the German war industries. At Valvilamos men were put in solitary, solitary confinement for trying to escape and it was a little bit 
of a room about 10 feet by 10 feet. There were no blankets and nothing to sleep on but the cement floor. There were only a couple in the room and they were just served water and bread. No guy was in there for, one guy was in there for 25 days or so. I can't remember his name but he was an American sergeant. There were no lights in there either. He was in awful shape. I'd say if a man stayed in there for a month there was a possibility of him coming out dead in my opinion. The American Foreign Minister, Mr. Harrison from Zurich, saw that as well. May Sean Ross was held five months in solitary confinement in Switzerland with hardly any air to breathe, little light, little space to move, with infested blankets and people murdered all the time in 2002 Switzerland. And I'm not even a criminal, but just a guy who criticizes the criminal syndicate of Switzerland and its people and now they want to put me in prison again by the end of November for speaking out on YouTube. Well these Swiss they taught me what hatred is, Swiss hatred, how they hate other people. Uh, Lieutenant Northfeld is writes about the 600,000 Swiss working for the German war industry. In fact, it has been estimated that Switzerland's war industry and criminal banking has pro prolonged World War II with at least two years. Two trainloads full with maybe 20 wagons went to Nazi Germany every day. This has been confirmed by historians as Jean Ziegler and many other historians. Most of the Fleck AA cannons were Swiss made like the Fleck 38 produced in Solothurn, Switzerland and the famous Erlikon cannons and all its ammunition produced by the Swiss. Well it even says it was uh, yeah. it says Solothurn was made by Solothurn, Switzerland. The Swiss had a very genius system of aiming the Allied planes through a Swiss device locking the AA in at the sound waves produced by the engines of the aircraft, causing the death of many Americans by Swiss hand. So here's the Fleck 38. The precision ignition technology of the German U-boats was Swiss made, for which they got gold and other treasures back in return. My grandfather was an officer in the Royal Navy and he got torpedoed so he died in World War II. He died with the help of the Swiss war industry. Even during the Falklands War many young British soldiers found an early death by Swiss weapons as Erlikon Skyhawk here and the Erlikon uh, they uh, they also sold uh, ammunition to the German war industry and guns, so AA con cannons, that means anti-aircraft cannons. So here you can see the history. And uh, it says, so this is in Wikipedia, you can look it up yourself, how the uh, British soldiers, they got killed by this neutral country <laughs> very neutral killing British soldiers oh, the Swiss are clean and neutral but they're selling guns all over and even worse which I'm gonna tell you now and an estimated one million people got murdered in Darfur genocide with the help of Swiss Pilatus warplane sold to the government of Chad. The Pilatus plant is right next to the Vauvilamo Swiss concentration camp. So the Swiss just say to themselves, well that'll teach them from immigrants coming to our clean and neutral innocent Switzerland. Our octagon warplane export will stop a few more Negro refugees to seek for a political asylum in our clean Switzerland. Well, 
it stopped one million actually they're dead and their children so before they had the German do it for them but the Germans won't march anymore so the Swiss look for other ex executives so here we can see the Pilatus uh, aircraft again over Switzerland. Switzerland is not at all a peaceful, neutral country. It's a very brutal dictatorship. And there it is again, the Pilatus. It can carry a lot of armor. It's probably faster than a Mustang uh, or, and a, or a Spitfire. Uh, it can do task, tasks some tasks much better than a uh, than a helicopter and um, yeah well here we can see it again with a nice snake on it in Switzerland with some Swiss mountains behind it it's the same airplane we just saw in chart where they did the Darfur genocide with the help of this Swiss airplane uh, killing one million people well, it depends on what you want to do really strategically speaking that is and it's no use buying an expensive NATO helicopter or a US fighter jet if you just want to gun down some families in tents and on camels for this the Pilatus P7 is a good option and you get 100 for the same price as for a US fighter jet and you don't need the fighter jets overkill on defensive civilians anyway so here the smart Swiss war industry of Octagon fills in the strategic gap of air power for a comparatively low cost genocide. So here's the CIA website and uh, talking about Switzerland. They got some intel on all countries. Well, and here's some about the financial uh, crime in Switzerland and the CIA uh, website they're talking about drugs here well Switzerland is the center of drugs in Europe due to the Swiss banking secret of course and uh, well um, any means of making money for the Swiss is okay for them you know, uh, the CIA well I mean they're they're into it themselves you know so they should know the CIA the cocaine import agency And of course, Mr. Hitler was financed by the Swiss and General Ulrich Wille from 1923 on in Zurich, where Rudolf Hess made the contact while studying at the Technical Science University of Zurich. See my other videos for that. And the list goes on. So here we can see Mr. Hitler in Zurich in 1923. We can see some Swiss uniforms, at least two. The guy on the left with the gun in his pocket, which we can see on, in my other video. These are the Swiss German partners uh, for a good business. A lot of gold, a lot of weapons exchange. So here's another official US report about the war in Switzerland. How uh, they prolonged the Second World War with years and uh, how... 50% uh, of all Swiss exports went to Ger to Nazi Germany. You know, uh, ammunition, shells, uh, weapons, Ehrlichen guns, uh, flak, the flak 38, everything. So here we can see how the Swiss masterminded the uh, the Swiss Nazi Templars, how they masterminded the whole Second World War. They're the ones behind it, I tell you. It shows a picture of Mr. Carroll and Mr. Pratt taking uh, two U.S. pilots or airmen, as they used to call them, of those time in those times, taking pr taken prisoner in Switzerland. So next is a testimony from Sergeant Seifert from Chicago. At Vauvillamos, we slept on boards and straw with one blanket to either cover with on with or sleep on. There were 46 men to a room, which was about 30 by 100 feet. There were lice and rats in there. The, la the latrine was about a block away, and it was just a slit trench. At first we had access to it all the time, but afterwards they didn't let us go 
out after nine because the guys were escaping and they couldn't keep track of us. We didn't have any clean clothes to wear. You could wash and take a shower every two weeks or so and they turn the water on and let you get soap all over and then they'd say that's enough. They were usually dungeons and there wasn't enough light in them. So this is a neutral country. Uh, the uh, yeah, the pilots had a far more better life in uh, in the German uh, prisoner camps for pilots. They had a very good life there. So in Nazi Germany, uh, in the Luftwaffe camps, the uh, the U.S. airmen and British pilots they were very well treated. They had food and clean. They were not tortured. They were not beaten as in neutral Switzerland, octagon. So next is the, uh, and we don't want to know what would have happened with all these guys when, uh, when Germany would have won the war, or if Switzerland would have won the war. Yeah. So next is Sergeant Stratters, here George Stratters, here on the picture. In Val his testimony, in Valvilla Mose, Marconi was held in solitary confinement in a damp, dirty dungeon. The place of imprisonment was infested with vermin and the left side of Marconi's body was severely chewed up by lice and other vermin that infested the place of his imprisonment. Marconi's diet consisted of a bowl of thin soup and one potato each day. This is what people got in Auschwitz, like, you know, the same. So we can see the whole idea of the concentration camps in Auschwitz. It was Swiss. It was by the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octogon. They did it. And it was their idea. The Germans just ran along with it, some of them, and they were in the middle of a dictatorship. The Germans were captured in a Swiss Nazi dictatorship by the Swiss banks and Octogon. So here we can see a German Panzer, a tank, and with a Swiss cross on it. Uh, with the and in the beginning of the war, they all had this Swiss cross on it because the Nazis were financed by the Swiss, the Swiss Templars. And they were so proud of it, they they ordered them to put the Swiss cross on it. But then it went a bit differently, so they changed it. It it, it wasn't to be one like so easily. So next is the testimony of Sergeant Swindell. One internee was on a crew that got shot up pretty pretty badly. He'd stand up at his window all night long and scream for his mother and sister. The next night he did the same thing. He kept all the rest of us awake with his screaming. The third night he just walked right through the window. He got no medical treatment and died. My normal weight is about 142 and I got down to 113. So that was in the Swiss concentration camp for one of the other American pilots. Next testimony is uh, left, First Lieutenant George Telford. I also saw the living conditions at Valvila Mose and the beds are just straw with one blanket in addition to which the sanitary conditions are about the most deplorable that I have ever seen. From what I have heard, the Americans were treated about the worst of any of the others who were in interned. So in Octogon, Switzerland, the airmen were put in terrible Swiss concentration camps. They were even worse than the ones in Germany, where the British and US Flying Corps were treated after the Geneva Convention standards, quite impeccable for German standards at the time. It was even quite funny, like as, as they show in these pictures, you know. And that was because the Stalag Luft 3 for pilots were kept by the German Luftwaffe, where its head Field Marshal Hermann Göring personally saw to it that the POWs under his responsibility were treated decently with good food and proper sanitary conditions. So why is it then that the Allied pilots in the Stalag Luft 3 were far more better off and treated after the Geneva Conventions in Nazi Germany 
then they they were treated in Switzerland, a so-called neutral country, where they were put in concentration camps. Well, I give you the answer. It's because Switzerland masterminded the war. They financed the Nazis and Adolf Hitler. They are behind the whole thing. And uh, most of the Allied and US pilots were shot down over Germany and they thought, well, they, they'd be better off in a neutral country well, with a neutral neutrality swindle. If they would have known, they should have stayed in Germany because they would have been far more better off in Germany with the, with the possibility to, es to escape and, and have good food and medical treatment and everything. But they believed these lies of Swiss neutrality swindle as most of the world believes it, because the Swiss have put an enormous amount of effort into their neutrality propaganda. Mr. Goering was a hero and flying ace from the First World War and a comrade of Red Baron von Richthofen. With all its chivalry and gallantry, even towards enemy pilots, and Goering kept this and saved the Allied pilots from Heinrich Himmler, the notorious head of the SS, who had quite some other plans with them. I think this fact should have been mentioned at the Nuremberg process. Of course it's a bit odd that he kept his first World War chivalry towards other enemy pilots and at the same time giving the order to bomb civilians in London, Coventry, Warsaw, and the rest, but he did save thousands of US and English uh, pilots um, and I think they, um, uh, they should have left him a little bit of his honor. So how is it possible that this war hero who shot down uh, Lieutenant Goering, who shot down uh, 22 enemy airplanes, and who kept his chivalry and um, um, towards enemy pilots to the end, saving them from Mr. Himmler, who wanted to put them all in a Auschwitz concentration camp for being gassed, to be gassed. How come that this man who kept his chivalry and gallantry, he changed that much? Well, I tell you why. He became under the he came under the influence of Hitler and the Nazis, and who were ordered by the Swiss Nazi Templars. And I don't even think that this quote here, which is supposed to be by Goering, that is from him himself. If it was from him, he wouldn't have saved the the Allied pilots from a far more worse destiny as like the Stalag Luft 3 or called it then he would have wrecked them all so th this is not his yeah maybe he said it but this is typical Swiss Nazi Templar stuff and he thought Mr. Goering thought it was the only solution I don't think uh, at the Nuremberg trial uh, they should have sentenced him, sentenced him to, to, to death. They should have kept him alive and to find out what other things he had to say, what more secrets there were. You know, but, well, the real headshed don't want these things to happen, just as they silenced up Rudolf Hess for the rest of his life. And he certainly would have had some very interesting things for us to say, just as Mr. Goering would have had. He's just a misled war hero, that's all. But the Swiss Nazi Templars, they are the real ones behind it. And I don't think we should forget how Mr. Goering saved all these young airmen, Americans and English, British and others from a far more worse uh, destiny. He saved a lot of people, but of course I don't agree with bombing civilians. And but this is what happened when people get indoctrinated. 
and in this case by the Swiss Nazi Templars. But the Swiss don't know any chivalry unless there's a lot of money to make somewhere. And therefore no government in the world will do a thing against Switzerland because they're all on Octagon's pay list and the world's entire financial elite has got their and your money stashed in a Swiss bank or a Swiss cave in Octagon. They're all in bed with the Swiss. So this is a, a Red Cross passport of a guy called Ricardo Clement. See my film about the Nazi red line, the red line. And uh, his real name was uh, Adolf Eichmann, the guy who loved concentration camps. Well, here's the reason for that the, uh, the US airmen in the Swiss concentration camp, they were not helped by the Swiss Red Cross. Because the Swiss Red Cross was on the other side, as you can see here. And all the other war criminals, as Klaus Barbie and Josef Mengele, they all got um, in the Marktkasse in Bern, they got a Swiss Red Cross passport for the Red Line. And they all made it to South America and to Spain. So this is why in Vauvillamos the Red Cross didn't do anything. And this is the reason that there were in the first place concentration camps in so-called neutral Switzerland for US airmen and British pilots and other pilots. Because the Swiss masterminded all the concentration camps and the Nazis. The Swissies just sign all international treaties, but they won't keep any of them. It might just come in handy. And too much attention by not signing them is not good for business. The Swissies bow for the wealthy and they spit on the poor and defenseless. The uh, Swiss Red Cross from Octogon of the Templars is a highly criminal organization which was set in place by the sly Swiss from Octogon, home of the Templars, in the year 1863 and one year before the first Geneva Conventions in 1864. Why? In the 19th century, the emperors of France and Austria were at war and their imperial armies clashing in northern Italy, close to the Swiss border in Italy. Accumulating in the Battle of Solferino on June 24, 1859, were altogether 300,000 men of the emperors Franz Josef I and Napoleon III clashed. The Swiss were very afraid that the war would spark over to their Switzerland, home of the Templars, who agitated with their new Masonic system against the European monarchies, so they wanted to spy on the war, and came with the typical sly Swiss idea of hearts and minds, by sending neutral doctors to sort of propose medical assistance to the wounded soldiers and spy at the same time. Therefore, they sent their Freemason Templar, Henri Dunant, who eventually founded the Red Cross of the Swiss Templars. The idea, of course, was much older than that, and already used during the Crusades by the Johannita Knights, amongst others, by helping the sick Crusaders. So here, this, here you can see the German doctors today who come from a direct lineage of the Johannita Crusaders who helped the Crusaders uh, at those times and they, they still do it today. These are doctors. So the Red Cross is in fact a Swiss Freemason organization which gives some humanitarian donations in order to hide their real intentions. This is the very thing Freemasons always do. They call it hearts and minds. So no wonder that the Swiss Red Cross handed out at least 9,000 Red Cross passes in the Marktgasse 49 in Bern-Octogon 
to deliberately help thousands of the biggest war criminals and mass murderers escape to friendly fascist regimes in Spain and Argentina. So here you can read the article from uh, 2012. Switzerland's involvement in all this, the Red Cross, it's all Templar stuff. Just punch pause. Where Joseph Mengele passed through the Swiss Nazi red line who committed indescribable acts of torture on thousands of defenseless children in the concentration camps. And now his family, Mangala, they have the biggest enterprise of selling agricultural um, equipment like cars, uh, trucks and, and uh, tractors and things like that. A very, very big company where, where you can find their articles in all over Europe. Um, you can see the Mangala family, they're building these sort of things here. This is, this is the same family. Very big company. I mean, where did they get the money from, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a billion dollar company, it's amazing. This is uh, war criminals' money, there's no doubt. They didn't even bother to change the name, look. Mingle You find this all over Europe. These are the winners of the Second World War and the crimes against humanity. And where Adolf Eichmann, responsible for the murder of millions, got a Swiss Red Cross pass under the name of Ricardo Clement. Uh, here we can see this is the Swiss Red Cross here. Big time criminals, I tell you. Geneva, Switzerland. And here's Adolf Eichmann. They just gave him another name. And they call him Ricardo Clement. Can you imagine? What a name. I recognize this as typical Swiss humor. During the 16 years of Swiss terror I've experienced, I heard them say a lot of these comments. These Swiss Nazi Templars of Octogon must have had a good laugh together when the Swiss Nazi police chief Heinrich Rotmund filled in the name Clement for their Nazi agent responsible for the murder of millions of people and gave this mass murderer the Latin name Clement, which means the merciful. This is typical Swiss humor, which I heard too many times already during this 16 years of Swiss humor. And where the butcher of Lyon, France, Klaus Barbie, head of the Gestapo, passed through Octogon, Switzerland of the Templars, and also Erich Pripke, well known for murdering 334 Italian civilians, including children, in the year 1944. And they all got helped by Switzerland. They got a passport and everything, no problem. The same criminal Red Cross said that the prisoners in Auschwitz were having a good time and no harm was done to them. This was in an Auschwitz report by the Red Cross to the Allies. Here you can see the official report uh, about the war. And in 2003, the Red Cross knew about the torture in the Iraqi Abu Ghraib prison, but decided, as ever, to keep silent. Just punch pause, you can read the, the article. That's the Red Cross folks, that's Switzerland. They're a bunch of liars.
Oh, you see, the Red Cross said, okay, it's okay, you know, to the Allies, they're, not, they're having a good time, you know. And I know this is all true, what's standing here, because I was severely tortured here in Switzerland through code O to T, putting me in a cell with no oxygen, and they murdered many, many people. The Red Cross knows about it, because I told them so, but they don't do anything. They just smile and say, oh, oh, we can't do anything. Well, this is in Switzerland. This is under their noses. They're still as criminal as they've always been. This is true. I've, I've experienced this with my own eyes here. They're a bunch of crooks. So we see that the Swiss Red Cross can be more associated with Nazis, war criminals, murder on millions, organized crime and death them with helping people. They're just a Swiss spy organization for the Freemasons and the Templars. And now these Swiss Nazis torture and murder immigrants in Swiss torture detention centers and continue to collect Nobel Prizes for peace just as the Mason Henri Dunant got one. Well, in our world, usually war criminals get Nobel Peace Prizes, don't they now? So the Swiss had their dirty fingers into World War II from beginning to end. Starting with the financing of Adolf Hitler here in Zurich, 1923, to the escape of at least 10,000 Nazi war criminals through the Red Cross. Octogon is the biggest crime syndicate the world has ever seen and these Swissies are incredible organized liars united in crime. They have no conscience at all. Ice cold as reptilians and all look alike. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. And I, Sean Ross, know after 16 years of incessant terror on me and my family and torture, how incredibly evil the Swiss people are. They are capable of just anything. Octagon Switzerland is protected by worldwide masonry with their men and women on all key positions, making sure that no country in the world will ever do something against the motherland and the base of all evil. So here in uh, Octagon, Switzerland, in Bern. So now it's Pretty Swiss. Swiss banks, you know, they had the Nazi logo before. Uh, it was called Kreditanstalt Schweiz. So, Marktkasse. It's just around where the parliament is. So, on March 23rd, uh, 1947, they gave the um, uh, Heinrich Rothmund, the head of the Swiss. Uh, Police, he gave the Red Cross passports to all the the German Nazis, thousands of them. Like uh, uh, Mengele, he came through here, and then they went to Luzern. So now they're working here. They had a nice stop in Luzern, and then they took the boat to uh, to Genoa, Italy, and then they, with the paperclip operation, they went to. Uh, they went to Argentina and um, the US. 
So um, Adolf Eichmann, his name, the Swiss gave his name, Ricardo Clement. And uh, there was also Erich Pripke, Mengele, they all went through here. They came here physically. So now there's a Swiss bank with the Nazi logo, what they had before, like 10 years ago. So now we are 2013. And um, so who was the president at this time? It was uh, uh, Juan Perón. If I analyze the name Perón in uh, in Pharaonic, it's per on, and per like in per a, where the word Pharaoh is from. That means the um, the big house. So per on that means the house of Osiris. So it's all Pharaonic Swiss banks. So now we're going to walk to the uh, to where the uh, here you can see the addresses here. We walk to where the, just around the corner there, where they're building, there's the, uh, the Swiss Parliament. I mean, they're all linked in, you know? They're all Swiss watches and loads of money here. So I'll show them to you. It's just around the bend, you know? Thousands of real murderers who killed millions of people, like Adolf Eichmann, Ricardo Clement. So unfortunately they're building here. So that is the, the Swiss Parliament, which is just here. And they cave the um, of course they cave the red the uh, the green light for all this. There it is. As you see if there's a uh, there it says Mark Gutter. So this is Mark Castle number 49. That's where it is. So I'm sorry, I was mistaken. It was uh, March 23rd, 1948, or not 1947. And uh, it's, it's called the Spider, which is very much uh, the Spider organization. And the Spider is octagonal, it's got eight legs. So these are all secret codes for Octagon. And we can see Isis, the sisters of Isis, you know, the sun hieroglyph, I showed you before. And the way they took, so that's what, where the people are walking there, that was the marked gasser. And the uh, marked gasser number 49, that's where they uh, gave the, uh, the pass of the, the, uh, the devil's pass, they call it. The Devil's Pass, and there was the red line. The red line of German Nazis and a lot of Swiss Nazis. I can show you a cemetery, cemetery in Luzern with the German helmets. I'm going to show you in a minute. So, the red line, all through Switzerland, who financed Mr. Hitler himself. You know, here the simplified Templars cross. Gold, Swiss gold. They are so deep in it. This is the, the biggest Nazi country in the world. It was their, their idea in the, in the first place. You know. well, there we are again. This is number 51. And the other one is number... 47 is in between. I don't want to stand in front because they're already looking. Uh, and they say, well, the Germans could never have taken Switzerland because uh, we're all mountains, which is not true. Fifth, more than 50% of the, of the land is flat, and that's where most of the people live. And then there's maybe 30%, which is hilly, and maybe 20% only, or 10. That's real like mountains. But even there, you can get by us. With any car, you can get there. or sure you can get that with a tank. And Switzerland had only five tanks in the Second World War and Germany had 75,000 tanks. So why didn't they take it? I mean there's a lot of gold here. They didn't have to go to Auschwitz to get the gold, they could have taken it right here. You know? Well they set it all up, the Swiss Nazis. 
Yeah. Swiss Nazi bank. It's funny that this Nazi bank is at exactly this place here, where they gave the Red Cross passports to the, uh, the Devil's Pass to all those Nazis and war criminals. There's the Swiss Nazi bank, exactly on this spot here. Now it says again, Marked Gasse. See? That's where it is. And there was the, the famous number 41 here. 49, sorry. 49. With the Swiss Nazi bank. And they really had a swastika logo before. Kreditanstalt. So this is the home of the Nazis, this is Octagon, Switzerland. Yeah, you want to smile? Swiss Nazi? Look at him. <laughs> they always smile and they say, oh, we're so innocent, we're so neutral. Look at him. Do you believe this? Yes. So here's the logo of the Credit Suisse, um, uh, as it was a few years ago. It looks like a swastika. Probably wasn't good for business, so they changed it. And this bank is exactly at the spot where the um, where the Nazi war criminals in Bern, Switzerland in the Marktgasse 49 got a Red Cross passport to go to um, to Spain or Argentina look at it so you think that's a coincidence that this bank is here? no no, that's not a coincidence. They're the same ones who financed it. Oh yeah, two obelisks for Osiris. Next to the water is Isis. The symbol of the Pharaonic domination in Octogon, Switzerland. Everywhere is the Templar's flag, like here. And there, it's all over. And here as well. In Luzern, in Octagon, Switzerland. Everywhere. So, two obelisks. And as it is carved on top, it's a symbol of the circumcision, which is fair on it. old cemetery in uh, Luzern. It's full of obelisks. Uh, the quality won't be that good because I, uh, I did it with a uh, with a um, mini DV and now I try to look, look at the pyramid and here all those Nazis, 9,000 Nazis and probably more who got these Swiss uh, Red Cross passes uh, to go to Argentine, they they stopped here and celebrated here at the place where there's a a German Stahlhelm from the Nazis, uh, where they commemorate uh, the Swiss who fought uh, for the Nazis in the Second World War. So here, all those Nazi criminals like Josef Mengele and um, Pripka and Adolf Eichmann, uh, they all passed here to commemorate uh, their crimes together with the Swiss Nazis. So very soon you're going to see the, uh, the German helmet here in Switzerland. Look, it's full of obelisks, it's full of pharaonic symbols and um, yeah next to the water there in Luzern. So Luzern is on the on the red line going to Genoa. Oh, there it is. You see? A German helmet. It says the uh, fighters who died uh, far away from home for Germany. And it says there 1933-1945 with the uh, with the falcon 
of uh, Horus on it. So this is definitely the Horus Matrix. Yeah, this is the Horus Matrix, and all those war criminals they pass here. There's no doubt they pass here. So this is definitely, this is a German helmet, this is not Swiss, there you go. So this is on the red line, they probably had a good time here doing some sightseeing, taking it easy after six years of war, you know, the red line, going to Argentine, from Bern to Luzern, to Genoa, and then to Argentine or Spain, and they had a happy life afterwards. Maybe even Mr. Hitler went there as well. Apparently he died in Argentine as well. On their way again through the village, the Swiss Templar army of Octogon. Every man here has one of these assault rifles at home, loaded, fully automatic. They're more armed than in Texas. It's a caliber 223 Remington. And uh, that one there. Every man has to do this here. So now even professionals. The Swiss, they say, we don't have an army. We are an army. Probably very effective. They've done this for thousands of years. You know, terrorizing Europe. Protecting the Pope. Oh. So this is in uh, summer 2013, July. Women, some dykes. Well, I mean, there were women, women, female guards in concentration camps, either, you know, so don't underestimate the women. There they are. Well, it's without an end. So many. Well, this is a Swiss toilet in Octagon. Well, you never. It looks like a prison. You have to pay for it. Look at it. all sort of codes. Just want to have a go in the toilet. Here it says toilet. Prison toilet. Another chapter in history where Octogon, Switzerland, had their fingers in it was the apartheid in South Africa, where this not very neutral alpine country helped developing six atomic bombs with South Africa that actually were produced. And there they are, a South African six pack that will make you more than just a little drunk with the help of Switzerland. And of course, Octogon was after the gold.
Nazi gold, South African gold and diamonds. And the Swiss imported 500 kilos of mandrax, which is now the biggest drug plague in South Africa. Swiss General Major Peter Reglis Chemical Warfare Program Developing with the South African Dr. Death or Wouter Bussel who together with the Swiss from Octagon murdered many people in South Africa with all sorts of chemicals and throwing people alive out of airplanes over the ocean. Now where did we hear this again? Oh yes, Argentina at the same time and where Octagon gave 10,000 Red Cross passes to dangerous Nazi war criminals so they could escape to Argentina. Must have been a Swiss idea it seems, throwing people out of airplanes alive. So, we can read the whole thing here. It's about a Swiss commission, you know, investigating the thing. That's what they always do. That after it's happened, they, may, they put up a commission. An honesty commission. Well, we all know the answer, don't we? The Swiss and Dr. Death were even developing the black bomb that would only kill African people, probably attacking African DNA only. They called it Project Coast, as in throwing living people out of airplanes just over the coastline. Maybe I'll read the whole story. Just punch pause. Octagon General Regli worked together with the boss or Bureau of State Security, even murdering people in Europe. Reminding us of another Swiss general called Ulrich Wille who financed Mr. Hitler in Zurich. And here's Mr. Zurich in, in uh, Mr. And here's Mr. Hitler in Zurich, where he got financed by the Swiss. And all these Swiss sort of so-called commissions for the truth, they all end up like that Switzerland is so neutral and so innocent and they never done anything. Eh? And this is the same Zurich where many years later the South African diamonds went to in collaboration with the Swiss Octagon. Octogon Switzerland together with the Basel chemical plants, Siba, now Novartis, Roche and again Brown Boveri company had real plans and executing them to wipe out the entire black population on the southern part of the African continent. I tell you, everywhere Octagon Switzerland has their dirty little fingers in it when concerning huge crimes against humanity. In South Africa, with Hitler and financing the Nazis, Argentina and the Red Cross passports, the Crusades, Swiss mercenaries torturing French citizens at La Bastille, leading to the French Revolution, the European witch hunt, and the Swiss book The Maleus Maleficarum, The uh, Witch's Hammer, Lenin in Zurich, Hitler and Rudolf Hess in Zurich, South African blood diamonds in Zurich, Swiss mercenaries killing 20 million Germans during the Thirty Year War, the Pope's Guard, Arab dictators and Swiss banks, etc, etc. And now the torturing and murdering of immigrants and spreading hatred and racism throughout Europe by the very influential Swiss People's Party and the list goes on. There, you can read it yourself. That's Dr. Death again, the friend of Switzerland, one of the eight pages. I'm not sure if I'm showing, if I show them all to you. Well, these are the things the Swiss like. Make business at the same time. Just as Alex Jones, actually. Business, business, just as Hitler. Look up the rest yourselves. 
Well, it says where well, he traveled to Basel. It says to Switzerland. Well, it says here. In some countries he had success. He didn't have any success in some countries, and in some countries he did. As in Switzerland, apparently. Oh yeah, and they have a tactics ready every time by pretending an independent Swiss investigation to manipulate the world and show that not all Swiss are bad and the other half are very alert keeping an eye on when it's too late and over. They had a Nazi commission, a South Africa commission, an Argentina commission, a Red Cross commission, etc, etc just diverting and throwing sand in our eyes while the entire Swiss population in fact agrees with Swiss Swiss crimes really there's no innocent other half that just isn't well, so the whole thing. it's it's the same here they call it the South Africa research group oh what a lovely name isn't it it's like uh, it's like asking George Bush to investigate 9-11. And actually, Octagon is behind 9-11. They did it. It's all a bunch of Swiss lies. They got their fingers in everything, I tell you. Well, and this is the kind of propaganda the Swiss People's Party are sending by mail. Look, there's the bear, you know, like in the Revelations. It's all propaganda and hatred against foreigners. And foreigners are, are only being portrayed as criminals, as all sorts of animals, like here, you know. So, this is what they're doing. So, for the Swiss, uh, Swiss politics needs criminals, so they have to make criminals. Well, I know how they do it. They just lie something together, because the Swiss Nazi politics they need criminals so they can, so they can terrorize them and and you know to do things in the in the parliament in the government to attack innocent people as they're doing with me, the police, the justice department. They're just lying things together. They're a bunch of crooks. And uh, as we can see here, they are insinuating that all, all foreigners and all immigrants are criminals. Where, in fact, the real criminals are the Swiss. Look. This is us, the immigrants, or, you know. And they're using the parliament in a very sly way, just as uh, the Swiss told Mr. Hitler to be patient and to use the democracy to get into power and they helped him to do it. This is the way they do it and they still do it today. So they're going to vote again on in a, in a few weeks, November the 24th. Well, just two days before they want to put me in prison on the 26th. Well, nice, eh? Nice people. It all fits together. And I can tell you now that all Swiss can see what's happening. They're showing these things in the media, on, on TV, uh, in the streets, you know, um, portraying immigrants as criminals. Because Swiss politics needs criminals. And um, so all Swiss can see it. And if there will be a, um, a truth uh, investigation afterwards, None of these so-called good Swiss of, uh, can say, well, we didn't know this, what was going on. You know, it came out of the blue. Yeah. There are no good Swiss. Very, very few. Maybe zero, zero something percent. All the good people that have been murdered here in all those ages before. By the Pope's guard, by the Swiss mercenaries, by the... Uh, by the witch hunt, etc., etc., by the Nazis. So here, this is really where Octagon, where the Templars have a uh, an entire farmed race. 
and no country in the world will ever do something against the motherland of all evil because the Nazi Templars of Octagon, Switzerland created a world wide web of Freemasons on all key positions, in all governments, in all countries out of the Swiss Templars obeying and executing orders from their Octagon base and motherland of the Templars and pri Priory of Sion in Switzerland Ok, true, the big Bantu tribes as the Zulus ruling South Africa now came 100 years after the Whites and the only true South Africans are the Bushmen and Hottentot still today's losers working together with the Swiss the Octagon Templars, they're the ones behind it but the whole situation in South Africa has been created by Switzerland from the beginning when white Huguenot, Protestants, Calvinists and other religious minorities had to flee Europe from Swiss persecution during the 30 year war from 1618 until 1648 when Swiss mercenaries ransacked Europe paid by the Catholic Church with Inca and Maya gold from South America and Octagon murdered 20 million Germans and their children so this is something the whole population in South Africa should know that the, the white settlers are refugees themselves and victims themselves that the origins of the, uh, the dilemma in South Africa they, and the apartheid they lie in Europe and in Switzerland it's octagon of the Templars who are behind it all and creating the whole situation we cannot understand the actual situation by not looking at history so this is what I want to tell you the Swiss are behind everything the Templars of octagon then the Dutch sank the Spanish and Portuguese armadas with the Templars flag in their sails with gold paying the Swiss mercenaries and this meant the end of the 30 year war in 1648 and so South Africa could be founded only four years later by Jan van Riebeek in 1652 as a direct result of the end of the 30 year war and the Dutch being the masters of all seas after defeating the Spanish and Portuguese Templars Armadas so this Templars logo and the thing we find on the uh, uh, on, on the Nazi warplanes and but then in black like you know was they were all sank by these here here you can see the Dutch flag and they saved actually Germany for total and the Germans for a total wipeout but well then again in 1940 the Germans were not very thankful to the Dutch so this is the reason only four years later that South Africa could be founded and it is all related to the Templars of Octagon Switzerland who ransacked and terrorized the whole of Europe and because of which uh, many Europeans had to flee to another part which was empty at that time South Africa there were only some uh, Bushmen and uh, Hottentot there were no Zulus, there were no Bantus so here again we can see some Templar ships with the uh, the Swiss cross or here this is the Red Cross but it's the same thing actually from the same country this is also the Armada and they had very big ships and the, and the Dutch they had very small ships that were used to the rough North Sea and they could shoot under the uh, under the waterline because these ships were really very big and they could be maneuvered quite more easily so here again you can see the uh, Dutch or you can also say the South African ships really with the South African or Dutch flag here sinking the armadas and all South Africans especially the black population can ask themselves and put themselves and ask the, the, the honest question what would have happened in South Africa if the Spanish and the conquistadores and the Portuguese would have won this war and not the Dutch 
than the Zulus, they would be would have been massacred just like the Indians in South America. And the black population would have ended in a total civil war like in Angola. So you have to take into uh, consideration all these things really. So at that time the Dutch and the South African fleet was the, uh, was the biggest in the world um, for about 100 years it lasted, even stronger than the British fleet. And uh, they were fighting the baddies actually, the ones who massacred all the people in South America, the ones who financed with their Templars logo of Octagon the um, the Indians in South America and um, so we might say the good ones really won but um, they got punished later on when Hitler got financed by Octagon Switzerland so here we can see some more action where the Dutch South African fleet they destroyed the baddies and they destroyed Octagon for a while. But they had to pay for it dearly. And this is also actually the reason why, uh, why or and the founding of gold, of course, that the Boers, they had to suffer during the Boer War. It's also a revenge because Switzerland never forgets anything. So, I'd say the Boers and the black population, they got a lot of things in common and should unite against the Swiss, against Octagon, and what they did. We shouldn't forget. So here we can see the, uh, the founding and the, uh, the landing in, uh, in Cape Town, in South Africa, as a direct result of the end of the, of the 30 year war and the, the Swiss terror of Octagon. So four years later, it was in 1652, by Jan van Riebeek. So these are my ancestors who actually had to flee and fight the Swiss terror. And here again in South Africa, Jan van Riebeek. Um, so if the baddies and Octagon, the ones who murdered all the people in South America would have won, this would have gone a slightly less peaceful, I suppose. And because of this, the, uh, the, the Dutch sinking the Armada and stopping, stopping the 30 year war and fighting Octagon because of all this and because the Swiss Templars never forget a thing in 1940 Rotterdam in Holland where the Dutch ships left from defeating the Templars Armada had to be bombed in revenge murdering thousands of civilians in one night and through terror the whole country and the army had to surrender. Remember how the Swiss financed Hitler and gave him all the orders as Hitler was their Octagon agent. Everything hangs together folks and Octagon Switzerland always got their dirty little fingers in it. Even wrecking the US economy through tax evasion and Swiss banks, where the organized Swiss criminals threw parties for US billionaires with classical music and a banquet dinner, only to, do, to discuss tax evasion afterwards and during the dinner party for the wealthy. This is how sly, organized and calculated these Swiss and their octagon really are. It's Octagon ruling over a Pentagon. It's the Swiss Biz, the Bank of International Settlements that owns the US economy and the Federal Reserve. This picture here shows the whole deal what's going on. Don't have the US sucked out by these Swiss Templars and their banks. First, there was the genocide in Sudan, which lasted 20 years in the lives of 2 million people by the Arab Muslims in the north, killing the Christians and animist Africans from the south of Sudan. Then, in 2003, the Darfur genocide started, killing an estimated 1 million people with the help of Swiss Pilatus airplanes and the Muslim 
Junja Weed or Devils on Horseback. And an estimated 1 million people got murdered in Darfur genocide with the help of Swiss Pilatus warplanes sold to the government of Chad. The Pilatus plant is right next to the Vauvilamo Swiss concentration camp. Pilatus is the Latin name for Pontius Pilat, the Roman prefect of Judea, who condemned Jesus of Nazareth to be executed by crucifixion. A very good name indeed for this Swiss genocide airplane used by the Janjaweed and the Muslims to murder black Christians in Africa. So the Swiss just say to themselves, well that'll teach them from immigrants coming to our clean and neutral innocent Switzerland. Our octagon warplane export will stop a few more Negro refugees to seek for a political asylum in our clean Switzerland. Well, it stopped one million actually. They're dead and their children. So before they had the German do it for them, but the Germans won't march anymore. So the Swiss look for other ex executives. I told you so that the Swiss are no real Europeans and that octagons ancestry goes back to the pharaohs of ancient Egypt and the Muslim world is just part of the Swiss octagon Nazi connection as Hitler had entire Muslim divisions of Albanians, Chechen Chechnyans, Bosnians and Arabs in the SS as we can see them here the praying in SS uniforms and nowhere else in the world Hitler's book Mein Kampf is being sold and read more as in the Muslim world and the Swiss they finance Hitler so they also finance this here so no wonder Octogon is selling Pilatus genocide planes to the Muslims to kill Christians and don't forget how 100,000 Swiss mercenaries murdered two-thirds of the Christian Protestant German population during the 30-year war from 1618 to 1648 so here you can see one of the the uh, the SS Shriner hats they're wearing. Yeah, this is one of the Muslim divisions. So this is not a brigade, or you know, this is not small. This is big. This is division, like. And and here you can see them wearing it in in SS uniforms. Bosnians, Albanians the Hanshar division well, here you can see the same hat in Schreiner hat in German Feldkrau as the Wehrmacht so the Swiss genocide airplane has been used in Burma for massacres on Christian minorities and the Karen people it has been used for gunning down Zapatists and civilians in Guatemala and by the Mexican Air Force Saddam Hussein used a low-cost Swiss genocide plane against Christian minorities and to spray biological warfare on the Kurds and their children. The Chad Air Force uses it in the Darfur genocide and so on and so on. So this here is uh, Wikipedia where you just have to punch in Pilatus P7. They also have the P PC twenty one, which is the fastest, and the PC six and the PC nine, I think. Oh, charming, isn't it? And here it says in German on Wikipedia about uh, Saddam Hussein and the Kurds, where you just punch in Pilatus aircraft. So this is Wikipedia. And there it is again, the Pilatus, it can carry a lot of armour, it's probably faster than a Mustang uh, or, and a, or a Spitfire. Uh, it can do task, tasks, some tasks much better than a, uh, than a helicopter. And um, yeah, well here we can see it again with a nice snake on it in Switzerland with some Swiss mountains behind it. It's the same airplane we just saw in Chad, where they did the Darfur genocide with the help of this Swiss airplane, uh, killing one million people. 
So the latest Pilatus PC-21 version flies around 700 kilometers an hour, which is as fast as a World War II Spitfire or Mustang. And it uses US Pratt & Whitney engines developed in Canada. And this is their fastest version, the PC-21, the fastest genocide airplane from Switzerland. So you can read the whole article, just punch pause. So it says the Swiss government, they, uh, they say they will investigate it. Well, they won't, to just talk a lot, but they won't do anything. So everybody thinks, well, we do, they do something. They've been doing it in the Second World War with the Nazis. They've been doing it before, and they're never going to change anything. So they got, they, since the Second World War, they had plenty of time to change something, but they didn't. You see what I'm getting at? So here we can see the Pilatus uh, aircraft again over Switzerland. Switzerland is not at all a peaceful, neutral country. It's a very brutal dictatorship. The chopper is too slow and doesn't get very far, and the jet is too fast to gun down defenseless civilians, as in the desert. So the Pilatus fills in the gap, and as the Swiss are very sly, get all the government's approval and stand above all international laws, they sell the plane in a civil version to go around UN embargoes and selling the attachments to hook on bombs and guns in, other, in another shipment or sell it first to a non-belligerent third country who again sells it, sells it to the dictator and wannabe genocider. So you can read the whole article. Just punch pause. Well, the Swiss, their banks and Erlikon guns have indeed a long tradition of neutrality swindle and lots of experience in camouflaged arm trades with the Nazis during World War II and other criminals. Well, it depends on what you want to do, really, strategically speaking, that is. And it's no use buying an expensive NATO helicopter or a US fighter jet if you just want to gun down some families in tents and on camels. For this, the Pilatus P7 is a good option. And you get 100 for the same price as for a US fighter jet. And you don't need the fighter jet's overkill on defensive civilians anyway. So here the smart Swiss war industry of Octagon fills in the strategic gap of air power for a comparatively low cost genocide. And to show how deep Octagon and this Pilatus genocide machine are involved into the highest levels of power, they even show the Pilatus factory in several James Bond movies in the Alps as in Goldfinger of 1964. So here you can see uh, Sean Connery uh, looking at the Pilatus factory. This thing goes very deep, extremely deep and higher, high up into the, uh, higher than the Swiss Alps. What a charming country, isn't it Charles? Oh yes Camilla, let's do some more skiing. <laughs>